Here's an example of a linear programming problem. We're uh, packaging up nuts into mixtures. This is number 11 from the book. We have two types of nut mixtures, standard and deluxe. We have uh, the standard mixture, which is more peanuts than cashews, 100 grams of cashews and 200 grams of peanuts, sells $1.95. The deluxe has more cashews because they're yummier but more expensive. And uh, 150 grams of cashews, 50 grams of peanuts, $2.25. We have 15,000 grams, it says 15 kilograms, but I went ahead and converted it, uh, of cashews and 20 kilograms or 20,000 grams of peanuts available total. We also want to have at least as many standard as deluxe packages. It says that demand is such that we want to make sure we have at least as many standard as deluxe packages. And the goal is to maximize the revenue. Notice it's not profit, just, just to make things simple, like the way I set things up, we're just maximizing the money coming in. Um, it's, it's realistic enough and uh, it's not too complicated. So, first crucial thing, uh, if you look at the guidelines they have on page 737, the first thing they say is choose the variables. That's always the first thing to do. That's absolutely right. So, um, really easy mistake to make right at the start, it's going to screw you up completely, is thinking the variables are cashews and peanuts. Those aren't variables. We know how many cashews we have. We know how many peanuts we have. What we can choose is how many standard packages and how many deluxe packages to make. And so the variables are going to be, let's say, x equals number of standard packages, y equals number of deluxe packages. Okay. The second thing they say is find the objective function. It's not absolutely crucial to do that second, but it's not a bad idea. Um, the reason why it's not absolutely crucial is not actually going to come in directly to the first part of the problem. But it's, it's crucial to the, the second, the last part of the problem, and we, it's good to kind of separate it out from the rest of the stuff. Okay? What is the quantity we want to maximize? Okay, revenue. The revenue here is just the total money we get in. Well, that's going to depend on how many uh, standard we sell and how many deluxe we sell. For each standard, we're going to get $1.95. So it's going to be $1.95 x and then for each deluxe we're going to get 225 and so this is the typical situation we're going to get a linear function of these two variables this is going a little bit beyond what we usually do it's a function but it's a function of two different variables and that's okay because we're only going to have to we're not going to have to do anything sophisticated with it we're just going to have to plug in a few particular choices of x and y into this function so that's going to be we're going to save this for later. So if you're confused about why we're doing it now, well, I'm just going, to he going ahead and following the book's guidelines, but we really are going to save that for later. The third thing in their s uh, recommended steps is something that we did first, and it's really crucial. It's the hard part of the calculation. Find the feasible region. What is the set of all possibilities based on these constraints? So these guys, this, the 15,000 grams of cashews and the 20,000 grams of, of peanuts, those are going to constrain our possibilities. So the feasible region is created by the constraints, which are some inequalities that we're going to find that define the feasible region. Okay, so let's see. There's going to be an inequality having to do with the limited supply of cashews. And that's going to say, we're going to say, what's the number of cashews that would we would want to use for a certain choice? That's going to be a function of x and y. And we're going to look at an inequality saying that has to be less than 15,000. So the cashews that are used up by x standard packages is going to be 100x. Oh, let's put, go back into math mode. That's just cashews used by standard packages. Then we're going to have 150y. That's cashews used by how many standard, how many deluxe packages we have, and that can be at most 15,000. Of course, what makes it an inequality problem is that that, that at most. Okay, now there's going to be a um, an inequality for peanuts based on the limited supply of peanuts. So there's always going to be inequalities based on limited supplies in these kinds of problems, or almost always. Um, okay, well let's see. I'm scrolling down too far. Okay, so the standard has 200 grams of peanuts. Oops. 200 grams of peanuts times x plus the deluxe has 50 grams of peanuts. 50 grams for each, so that's times y, and that's less than or equal to 20,000. 
So this is really the heart of the problem. For each constrained quantity, each limited quantity, we're writing down an inequality, and there's really three pieces. There's how many cashews are we going to need based on x standard, how many cashews based on y deluxe, add them together, and they should be less than or equal to the actual total available number of cashews. Now we also have, want, we want at least as many standard as deluxe. That's the kind of English phrase that's really tricky. You have to be really careful about that. It's either s is greater than or equal, or sorry, x is either greater than or equal to or less than or equal to y. Well, the standard is at least as much as, or is greater than or equal to y. And then, so that's probably a really tricky thing, but it's it's not impossible to get right. You just have to sit down, maybe make a, even a guess, and then just say, does that work? Put in some numbers. 200 standard packages, 100 uh, deluxe packages. That satisfies this inequality. Does it make sense with this the, this uh, phrase? Very, very often, just putting in test numbers will save you a lot of grief. We also, we may, not, may or may not need these inequalities, but it's certainly true that these guys should be non-negative numbers. Okay, so that should be enough. That should be all the conditions to get us a feasible region. Now, if we're going to do this by hand, you could do it on the calculator, um, but sometimes I might make you do it by hand. Remember, if we make this an equality, what we would do is make it an equality and graph the lines. So, let's see, just let me remind you, to graph by hand, this was in another video, but to graph by hand, make each separate inequality an equality and graph the resulting line. Okay, that's going to be five lines. So, for example, this guy, if I make it an equality, um, we can just write down the intercepts. Remember, the quick way to graph the line is write down the intercepts. If y equals 0, or cover that up, we get 100x equals 15,000, we get 150 comma 0. If x equals 0, the y-intercept, I get 150y is 15,000, that's 0 comma 100. Okay, just, just pretty simple division, and they made the numbers work out nicely. Okay, now what about the peanuts? Turn that into an equals. That's going to be, if y equals 0, you're going to get x equals 100. And if x equals 0, you're going to get y is 400. Okay? So that's graphing with uh, the intercepts. Now, x equals y, that's easy to graph. Okay? And x equals 0, y equals 0, just the axes. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I actually prepared this ahead of time because graphing sometimes takes a few seconds that I don't want to waste. Okay. So here we go. Here's the graph. So here's x equals y. Here's the 0, 400, and 100, 0. That's the uh, peanut line. And then here's 1, 150, 0, and 0, 100. That's the, um, that's the cashew line. So this would be all the things where I max out the cashews. This would be all the choices where I max out the peanuts. Here's where I exactly have the same amount of standard and deluxe packages. And l we need to figure out which side to shade of everything here. Okay, these guys are bounded, bounding the total number of stuff. So usually that's on the low side and down left. And let's just check it. Is the origin on the right side of these guys? Yes. 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 15,000. 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 20,000. So these two downsloping lines, it's the, it's the origin side. It's the down and to the left side. Here, we've got to be careful with the x equals y line. Remember, it's x greater than or equal to y. So we go more to the right than we go up. Or equivalently, we could just test one point. We could test like 1 comma 0, and that would work. Or 100 comma 0, like here, that works. So it's, we're going to be shading in this stuff over here. So um, we're going to be looking at everything in this little quadrilateral. Um, so everything above the x-axis, below x equals y, and below and to the left of our two downsloping lines for peanuts and cashews. Okay, and the the graphing program here does do inequalities as you've seen, but it's not amazingly good. So I'm just going to leave it as with a verbal description. It's this nice little uh, bounded region, that quadrilateral. So remember, the next step is um, find the vertices. The cool thing about this method, the big theorem here, is that we don't have to worry about most of this feasible region. 
you'd think, you might think, we need to take all those possible x and y's, an infinite number of possible x and y's in that region, and test for all those x's and y's what this revenue quantity is. But we don't. It has to, the maximum or minimum is always going to end up on a vert on a, a vertex, a corner. Okay. So, well, some of them are easy. One is zero zero, and here the revenue at zero zero is clearly zero. If we don't sell anything, it's a bad idea. Okay. One another one is just one of the intercepts. That's one we already got by just graphing that. R of a hundred comma zero. Okay, we can plug that in pretty easily. Let me bring the revenue function down actually again. Okay. Okay, so that's going to be uh, $195. Just putting in x equals 100. Okay. That might be it. Who knows? Maybe we sell all standard and no deluxe. It's legal. Okay, now we're going to need to find two other intersections. Let's find this intersection. That's the intersection of x equals y and the cashew, the cashew constraint, okay? So let's leave that blank for a second. So intersections, intersection of x equals y and the cashew line, okay? So the cashew line is this guy. Now it's important, it's, it's, it's nice to know. We don't need to know, this is the peanut line here, and that's intersecting x equals y here. That's outside of our feasible region, so we don't need to know that. It would be wasted work to calculate that. And it'd be misleading if we actually found the revenue there, because it's likely to be high, but it's not legal. It's outside the cashew constraint. Okay, so that, and x equals y. Okay, that's very easy to solve just by substitution. We've got 250x equals uh, 15,000. Okay, and so x equals 15,000 over 250, which is, I probably can, I can do that in my head, right? Uh, well, 60, okay. Okay, so x equals y equals 60, in fact. Okay, so that, we can put that back up in here. 60 comma 60, let's see if that makes sense. Yeah, it looks pretty good. 60 comma 60 looks right on the graph, okay. So we put in 60 comma 60, r at that point, is going to be, okay, 1.95 times 60 plus 2.25 times 60. And we'll let the calculator computer do that. $252. 252 So that's better than just using all standard. Using an equal number is better. Okay. So now I need the other, the last intersection. Okay. And we're almost done. I know these take a while. That's why I not, don't assign very many of them. The intersection of, it looks like cashews and peanuts, I think, was the other one, right? Yeah, cashews and peanuts right here. Cashews and peanuts. Isn't that, isn't that a fun thing to say? I'm taking the intersection of cashews and peanuts. It's kind of funny. Okay, so it's this line. And let's go back up and get the peanut equation. Okay. Alrighty, and we want to solve that. Well, that's pretty easy to do with, with elimination, like double this first equation and subtract. Whatever we want to do, you guys are experts in that. Ah, x equals 90, y equals 40. Okay, let's put that in. So the point 90, 40 is one of the corners. Reven evaluate the revenue at that. I'll just copy this down. But put in 90, 40. I think that's going to win. Um, notice this is 120 total packages, this is 130. We are subtracting a little bit of this. Well, actually, I don't know who's going to win. Aha, just barely. 265.5. Okay. And so it does turn out that, in fact, it's probably the most interesting solution, really. Something we couldn't have even really guessed at the start. 90, 40. And the most amount we can make is $265.50. Okay, and so there's our answer to our problem. We sell 90 standard, 40 cashew, or 40 deluxe, and we make 265,000, $265.50, not $265,000. That would be nice, but uh, this guy is not in, in that league. Okay.